It's time. And there we oh. go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Pantelis podcast uh, for the patrons. It is live on a Friday. You're enjoying it. My guest today, a good friend of mine, uh, NFL enthusiast, alcohol enthusiast, comedian, podcaster, Gino Bisconte, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey, buddy, we're hanging out. How great is this? And neither of us is uh, drinking booze. You've been off the booze for how long now, Gino? Dude, I'm going to say, uh, watch, I can do this. It'll be 13 weeks on Sunday. So 13 times 7 is uh, 21, 70, 91, less 2. There you go. Uh, tomorrow will be 90 days. Do you know how crazy that is? Because for a lot of people, it's like, ah, whatever, I just wouldn't drink. That doesn't seem too cool. But every time I've been with you was a fucking yeah. drink fest. And this is morning or night. It, time doesn't stop you. So for you to just be like, you know what? Until shit gets back to normal, fuck it. I don't need to drink. That is crazy. That's but some self-control. also uh, another reason that I have been sober 90 days is we have not hung out in 90 days. It's all, <laughs> I make <laughs> because you drink. That's what I'm, I'm learning. And this, look, I am by no means done drinking. I mean, I've, I, I've toyed with the idea, but... The bottom line is this makes me realize I'm a great drinker because I love drink. You know, look, what did we do the time the last time we drank? You were in town. You're like, I got to catch a plane in two hours. I'm like, that gives you an hour to drink with exactly, me. Yeah. Or you might have even said I got and we go across the street. And we drink at a bar. And when friends come into the show and get up and I've said this where I don't know what time you have to get up to get to Manhattan at 845 a.m. with a bottle of Jameson and, and navigate that traffic. I don't know. But when fans show up with that whiskey, I have so much gratitude that I want to drink with them. But when you – two simple things. When, when Keith's like, no one's allowed in the studio, understood, uh, and the bars are closed, I'm not going to sit here with a with my fucking pumpkin, uh, pumpkin spice ale going, hey, we're drinking together. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> you know what the issue is? You drink like you have a night show, but you actually have a yeah. morning show. You drink yeah. like a night show. Yeah. And it's like I literally it's become part of the, the routine when I'm drinking. It's like whatever time I leave that bar Sullivan's across the street, I have to take a nap and have my have my evening coffee. I have morning coffee for the show and evening coffee for the rest of my life. Have you given up yet? Are you doing the, the Zoom shows or you're not giving no. in yet? No, Aaron does. Aaron, uh, Aaron Skypes in. And sometimes we have people Zoom. Oh, oh, I, I didn't realize what you meant. Stand up, stand up. No, it's, it's not like I'm turning down Zoom comedy shows. Okay, would but, you turn down a Zoom comedy show? I don't. At this point, I I would do at least one. Like, I did a live stream show before they shut everything down. Like, literally three days after the lockdown, Stand Up New York is like, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have comics go up the club, empty room, and talk to a, a microphone, excuse me, a camera right there in the crowd. I did that once and halfway through, I'm like, this is not the same. And <laughs> like Zoom shows, they say they're comedy shows, but they're just another Zoom podcast with multiple comics, I feel like. And I'm not bashing yeah. them. No, no, it's just that's what it is. It's not stand up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm missing them. I don't. I don't. But me and Aaron, did you see that? Uh, me and Aaron are doing a, uh, a, a secret comedy show tomorrow, Saturday, at a fan's house in uh, Westchester, New York. Well, I saw the poster. I like the poster because I like the way because the secret show and it's dim. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I was squinting. I was like, you sons of bitches. What is this? Because <laughs> uh, I, I was wondering where's because I know that um, Aaron was doing that tr behind a truck, like on top of a truck or something in a parking yeah. lot show in Atlantic City. Parking lot comedy, which I, I that's another one that I he's king of the parking. In fact, I think he fucking bailed on. I'm sorry. I'm just scooching over. I think he bailed on. Another one he was supposed to do this weekend. I think they stopped it or something, right? Because they. Yeah, he. It's literally the answer to your question in a nutshell. He's been doing Zoom shows and parking lot shows, and on our show on Jesus, it happens fast. I think it was yesterday. It's like I can't do this anymore. I need comedy with people we can trust, and he and he and a fan's like, come to my place in upstate, and within 24 hours it's set up, dude. Because I'm telling you, dude, I'm I'm losing my mind. Because if you're following the show, like. Yeah. I went to the doctor to get tested for antibodies and all. And of course, I don't have them, which and you know me, if you're following me on Twitter, I've been saying this is horse shit. And and when you say it's horse shit, 
you're right there with me. What were you? And I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying the fact that you think it's a pandemic that's gonna fucking people are lying dead in the street is horseshit. Let me add something to this, okay? So Please. a little while ago, now I'm not sure where I stand anymore because uh, obviously we've spoken before. We're kind of in the same boat. The more the more this would get big, I'm not saying it's fake. It obviously exists. But the more I'd be like, wait a second, are we even handling this right? Like there's a specific demographic that's at risk, and yeah. we didn't protect them. But everything yeah. else is going to stop. That doesn't make sense. But you know what scares me a bit more is that I was saying that uh, about a month and a half ago, two months ago when it first started, all the evidence that was coming out, I was like, everything points to this being in a lab. And I'm not saying they did it on purpose, but it, it got out accidentally. Oh, yeah. conspiracy theories, conspiracy theories. I'm saying, no, 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 look, there's, there, there was articles about it. Tim Poole was talking about it. And then now uh, Russia Today had something yesterday, an MI6, uh, I think a fucking, you know, one of those spies. Came out and said, yeah, we have evidence. Uh, it was from uh, that lab in China. And it got out by accident. Like I said, by accident. They weren't doing it on purpose. Now, right. this is what scares me. Since it was in a lab, now I'm like, oh, shit. Now it might be more dangerous long term than I would have thought. Because it was a regular virus, like a regular flu strain that just, you know, evolved over time. We could handle it. You know, it's something we've handled. But now right. I'm a little nervous because I'm like, holy shit, what else did they, how did they manipulate this? Here's here's why I think you're wrong. Okay. Uh, that it, and, and don't get me wrong. Here's why I'm not worried. I don't think you're wrong. I don't think there's any wrong or right. But the way I look I'm probably at it wrong. Is, I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm wrong pretty all often. The time. I'm wrong. But uh, but the, the the fact is, I don't think it was. Uh, they're like it. Here, the joke that I've been saying, and I love it. But it's fact. Like they're like it was transferred from uh, man to bat. No, you can't tell me it wasn't created in a lab. No one's eating bats. I'm like black people don't even eat bats, and those people love wings. But oh, I think, <laughs> yeah, okay. it's so, you know, my, my act hasn't changed at all in this pandemic. But here's the thing that makes me think it was it. If this killed retarded people, it would be Hitler's wet dream. If you want to create a and I'm not saying a biological weapon, yeah. if you want to create a pandemic and, and look, I'm not. I don't think it was on purpose. I think they were probably just fuck around with uh, like these influenza strains and, you know, they test I, shit and then it got yeah, out. But if, if, if you're looking for something to, and I don't mean like a biological weapon as much as like, and I'm not saying the earth is flat, I'm not saying the moon is a space station, but I will say it later. I'm saying if you wanted to scare people with this, you know, whatever, you plan 201 or whatever, if you wanted to create something so you could fucking do exactly what's going on now, show horrific numbers that stupid people will believe. You hear those you know? sirens? You hear they're coming after you. You they're see what happened? They're coming after me. Gotcha. Gotcha. He's been speaking the truth. <laughs> I, if, uh, if this is my phone, I'd drop it on the ground. But if you wanted to, you know what you would do? You'd have it, you'd have it while it's killing people, it would also be doing population control. So you would be killing what? The elderly who can't contribute to society. The fucking fat who can't really, con who are a strain on society. The fucking, uh, and, 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 and the immunocompromised who fucking are sick and, and, and are, are reproducing and making more weak people. Do you understand that? If it killed retarded people, I'd be worried, but it doesn't. But it would make it a Hitler wet dream. And I'm not sitting there saying, yeah, but do you realize it was the perfect thing so they could put huge numbers out, which we know now are old people. I'm sorry. And this gets back to what I was saying. I went for a COVID test and I'm so mad I don't have it. Not so much that I'm like, well, obviously I don't. Know. But this is a guy that was on the subway like in fucking early March before they shut things down. People yeah. this far from your face and I don't have it. And, and, and it's amazing how three months later, you know, after everything's coming out and you can't hide it anymore when the, the CDC is like, yeah, the, the mortality rate is 0.04 percent. And I had somebody say 0.04 percent times 325 million. No dipshit. 0.04 percent of the infected. But I can understand why stupid people that are so scared think it has to be a huge number. Yeah. And when all that goes away, they're like, what do we do now? Now you start a fucking race war now. And, and, and look, again, I hear myself say it and I, I don't care. I'm not saying it's a grand plan, but don't you think it's convenient? That they were, they were. If you were trying to control people and you used this thing, and after that wore off, you somehow managed to be able to go from asking people to stay inside to sending them a text every night to make <laughs> sure that they are. Wow! And now you get arrested. You don't get, and now you can't get arrested. Before I used to always go to work. They're like, "Are you a essential worker?" And I'd be like, "I'm a journalist." But I'd be like, if a cop came up to me. I would literally tell him where I'm going. And I don't mean I'd be like, what are you going to do about it? I honestly think he'd be like, OK, because 99 percent of the cops that aren't, you know, that aren't actors portraying fucking murderers. <laughs> do, do, no, don't jump on that. Do, are you I got a I got a text. People were, fans were sending me messages of Please. the what's the guy's name? The fucking guy that killed uh, George Floyd. Chauvin. 
Yeah, Shaw Valley. What a that's a weird name for a guy in Minneapolis. Yeah. Um, and ben like, Bailey. It's, he does. Yeah, yeah. Exactly it's like Ben Bailey. Bailey from Cash Cab. I was yeah. like, all right, listen, guys, I'm game for a good conspiracy theory as much as the next guy. Right. This isn't it. This isn't it. But you know what I find strange? So say you know how you said they're starting the race war. You know what's fucking yeah. crazy is we're letting the media turn this into a race war, and not a lot of people are speaking out about it. Because number one. Uh, the Black Lives Matter people did not say, uh, fuck white people. This is white people's fault. Uh, kneel before us white. They never said that. What they said was police brutality. They were against police brutality, which should be a global thing. Everybody should be against it, right? And then right. some people are like, they're coming for the white guys. And then that started a whole thing on the other side, and no one's telling the truth. And now it's all these different things that are coming out. Like Antifa snuck in there. And apparently they're oh. representing uh, Black Lives Matter, which I don't know how the fuck they represent. It's a bunch of uh, white kids breaking oh, shit. They, but they're not, right? Doesn't Black Lives Matter? Like, no, I've seen videos. They don't Black represent. Black Lives Matter is like fuck these guys. Yeah, they're... that's what I'm saying. That's what. But yeah. because you're looking at different videos, right? You're like, oh, wait, I, I don't care about something that's uh, gonna fit the narrative. I want to see what's happening. But most people aren't. They'll catch. That's why I've been trying. I've been tweeting and Instagramming a lot of videos that shows um, Black Lives Matter people telling people, hey, stop fucking breaking shit, and cops helping people and being good to people and black guys protecting cops, all that stuff, just to show that it's not all fuckery, right? That's the message I'm trying to come give to people is, guys, it's not what they're telling you. There's no fucking race war. They're trying. They have to separate us, right? They have to make us fight each other so we don't see the fuckery that the government's up to. Right. But the media's not doing that. The media, like, Santa keeps pushing the race thing. Gino, did they get to you? <laughs> yeah, let's say that. Let's say that and not that I hit the wrong button and just fucking flat out hung up on you. You They goof. got to me, but I'm okay. Oh, that was fun. But yeah, I was saying the CNN is pushing that narrative, right? The the race war thing, which is mm-hmm. fucking crazy. You know, you know. Imagine, imagine how like people must feel. Like the the, the people that are like, listen, we just want to let you know, uh, stop beating us up, stop killing us. And they're like, look at these guys. They want a race war. Yeah. Imagine well, how I mean, fuck that is. That's why I love that. that uh, who's that? Uh, who's the uh, killer? Killer Jeff or who's the black rapper? killer Mike? Killer Mike. Killer Mike. He said it perfectly. He's like. He's like, look, I love Ted Turner for bringing CNN to Atlanta. And he goes, and I love the Cartoon Network, which made me fall in <laughs> yeah. love with the guy more. Uh, but he's like, he's like, but I'm glad they're attacking because, and and I'll say, I say it all the time and people think I'm just saying it to tell our company line, but I can't even watch Fox News anymore. Rachel Maddow should die. CNN is garbage. The only thing I can, I can get through, not even can get through, enjoy, look forward to every day is our boy, Michael Malice. Yes. A 30 minute fucking guy. The people like, well, he's conservative. He literally is an anarchist. 90% of the time he's bashing the left, but 10% of the time he's making fun of Trump. And he gives you fucking the the only half hour you need of what's going on. And, and he says it all the time. The the, the media are the criminals in all of this. They are absolute. They're, they're fucking terrible. And, and the way they interview the president, I don't care if you like him or not. They're not doing their job. A, 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 per, a person in the media should be like, hey, what do you think about – a person in the media now has a notebook of, of here's something the president did. Let me ask him something I know to the, know the answer to. Suck a dick. Yeah. You, you're te- and I lo- that's why it's I love all gotcha Kayla stuff. just fucking beating people down with her. Let me ask you something. And then she walks away. Ooh, shut up. I hate what the media is doing, which brings me back to why I love the killer Mike. is like, yeah, they should be bashing into CNN. That place is a factory of fucking hatred and lies. And they did it for so many years. They've been pushing that narrative of uh, anybody who disagrees with you is a Nazi. They're fascists. Yep. They're this. They're evil. Racist. They're trying to kill you. Trying to kill you. And at the end, people are like, yeah, well, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Instead of progress, you've been pushing hate and fucking regression. This is what yeah. fucking happens. This is what fucking happens. So, again, I, I 100% am not for the looting. Um, I am all for fucking everyone getting together and even protesting to do because the cops, the same thing here, somewhere along the line, just like government, I don't know right. how we fucked up. We, we fucked up somewhere and government got too much control. The police went from, hey man, how you doing? Trying to serve you and protect you to get the fuck away from me. I'm in charge here type of shit, like the bully stuff. Yep. And oh, we, yeah. we just let it happen. We let it keep happening. And then that culture grew. And then we have that, you know, thin blue line mentality where even like we see it now, even if one cop fucks around, instead the other one's being like, hey, stupid, what are you doing? They're like, oh shit, yeah. we got we to stand with the team. We got to stand with the team. So I'm all, I've been speaking about this shit for years. I'm all for some kind of reform, but I don't know what it is. Would it be adding some kind of an IQ test to cops that they have to be a certain level of intelligence, smarter than us to, to get that job. I don't know what, because how do you test someone for biases that they don't know they have 
And also, what if somebody was a bully in high school, but now they're a good person? How do you, you know, how do you judge that shit? Well, here's why we're screwed. And I mean it. I, I mean it because it's simply, in my opinion, it's, you know what we need to do? We don't need to, we need to fucking educate people yeah. to make them realize, and, and we never will because people are stupid. It's like all the, like the new fucking justice system, and I'm all for it, is Twitter, is the new body cam, is the fucking cell phone. But what people- I, I like the body cam. Yeah, but people with cell phones, I don't have a problem with them capturing this guy. But here's what people don't get. They, they don't get that if every cop was like that, you would have tens of millions of videos every day. Oh, no oh the fact, it, of course it's not all cops. Dude, I hate right. I hate that but, narrative but people, too. But the, the one video, people are like, this is all cops. And, and, and you can make the argument, and it's counterproductive, but you can make the argument. Remember last year? Four fucking black kids tortured, pissed, kidnapped yeah. a white retarded guy. I remember. Why that. didn't we? Why didn't white people loot a riot? Why? Because because it's it's got to be the narrative is black people yeah. are still and they they have been. I'm sorry, but don't sit here and tell fucking comics like me and you. Well, you know you don't get it because of the systematic you know the, the racism racism. Fucking we're white straight wink wink comics over <laughs> fucking forty. The industry. First of all, I'm not over forty. I'm not over said, forty. You know, What's that? I'm not over 40. I'm the youngest one from the crew. <laughs> uh, dude, I just always say, well, please, I just went down to 40 because I'm over 50. And if I said under 30, yeah. it would call people's attention. Yeah, they'd be like these but, fucking bullshit. You know bullshitters. what I mean? But that's the I, thing. Fucking I, we're white street comics. Here's what I should say. Not over 40. We're white street comics over 25 years old. And never has the industry said, you know what we need to do? We got to give these white straight old dudes more fun. <laughs> no. So don't. We are the black men. We are the gay people of the fucking 70s. Well, I'm the gay people currently. The point I'm making is don't sit here and try and shove that because it doesn't work. The only thing that'll work and it's not going to is people using common fucking sense. And yeah. Saying, that wow, the system works, these guys are going to jail, they got caught, and this will... Sc You're not going to tell me that this has made the 1%, and that's a high number, the 0.05% of bad cops say, well, now we just got to be sneakier, maybe a few, but they'll get caught, and there's always going to be bad people. Yeah, there's always going to be bad... I do think, though, there has to be some kind of reform. We have to do something, because there, there's... Even here, man, we get a lot of cops that they're just... Their approach initially, even at a traffic stop, is right. angry. Like you, you just committed a crime already. They'll stop you and they'll come to the window yelling. See, and I think I think it depends on where you are. Like I got pulled over by, I we talked about this on the show like two weeks ago. I walk out of my house like I always do, eight thirty, eight twenty. Walk into the subway and they're fucking partitioning off the street. They're like, are any of these cars yours? You got to move them. They're gonna get towed. We're doing construction. So now I'm like, fuck. So I jump in my car. I'm like, I gotta get to work. I normally take the subway to work and take a dump. I'm, I'm in the car. I'm like, I I, I gotta you take, take a, a dump. dump in the subway. I, I should have, but I, I fucking am so confused. I make a left because there's no cars on the street. I make a left on 8th Avenue the wrong way. 8th Avenue. I go half a block and cops are like, what the fuck? These two cops in a van. You're a fucking cops terrorist. Goes to his van, turns on the lights and, and I pull over and he wasn't mean. Like, cause, cause I think when shit like this is going on, like when they were doing stop and frisk a couple years ago, cops weren't like, if they found a joint on you, they weren't like, you're going to jail. They're like, Jesus Christ, I can't be bothered with this. Yeah, Thank God you're just getting high and not shooting people. They literally looked at my window. They're like, they're like, and and they saw how frazzled I was. I'm like, officer, officer, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm late for work. I had to move my car. And he's like, where do you work? I'm like, right around the corner, 35th. I, I do. He's like, where do you live? I'm like 104th and 1st to move my car. And the guy didn't say what he's like, look. Calm down. We're going to get you out of here. And he walked. He held up traffic. And he's like, turn around. And I think that's what goes on. And if cops yeah, but, are being but, assholes now, they're not good cops. You but, know what I mean? But I, there I mean, you go. To, to civilians, if cops are being assholes to the guys punching and spitting on them, they're right. They're right. I keep talking. No, no, but, sorry, boss. You, no, no you, you're fucking right, though, because that's it, it's not all cops. It's not all same thing. That's when people are like now with the looting. They're like, black guys are looting. First of all. Most of the looting that I've seen is happening for fucking white kids. It's, um, it's white kids but, in and, their black fucking head to toe outfits. But even even the black people that are uh, looting, like it's not just because someone's looting that they're for. A lot of people don't even know what the fuck the protest is about. They're just like, I'm gonna go get some free shit. So you can't. Oh, yeah. It, the biggest mistake we make is the second we see something crazy and we're like, look, all of that is the problem, and that perpetuates this whole fucking thing and it creates that division. And I'm telling you, man, that's what they want. You know how much easier it is to control people when we're all fucking fighting each other for nonsense? Oh, of course. So much easier. Subdivide and conquer. That's the oldest fucking, you know, war plan in the book. Yeah. That's what cops are doing now to, to keep these groups from fucking looting. But when you, 
Like the, the 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 thing that I think is going to help it as much as it's fucking causing it is social media when they when they're posting pictures of like like if you watch the old riots of fucking Rodney King and and, and even further back those are fucking riots. Now, that was a beating. People. Yeah, that, that's that's a fucking beating. But now when when you're trying to fucking set up a fucking revolt and you have fucking young black kids showing a pallet of bricks that were just wheeled on a cart. Yeah, I tweeted that. Yeah, that kid. Yeah, in front of a government building. Oh, you, you saw know? how smart they were, the kids? They saw I them? That. They're like, like, this you is... You got to do better. You get... yeah. And those, that gives you hope, you know? Yeah. And when, and, and dude, fucking Mally showed a clip. I, I It was the best where fucking this group of black people screamed, literally screamed, get the white guy. And they showed the camera <laughs> and there's some white Antifa fucking old fucking college professor faggot, obviously. And you find this out. And you know he's got a hammer and he's smashing bricks for people to throw. The the mob grabs him and they they just and he's fighting and they they hand him over to cops who throw him against the wall, rip off his mask that he's fighting to keep on, and he's some old gray haired, excuse me, like salt and pepper haired guy. And it's like you're the problem. Yeah, and, you're and the it problem. Gives you hope that people are like stop, stop playing us when they show the the white cop just bashing in windows. Yeah, and yeah. Didn't I see? And I hope you can answer this. Didn't I see the guy that was also caught on camera? Paying kids, paying oh, kids I didn't to see throw that. rocks on camera. It, it, it's all. It's. I hope it's not made up, and I oh, hope it is made up. These motherfuckers. They, the guy used to be some kind of fucking press advisor for for Bernie Sanders. It's insane. And I, I feel like they're doing this to to make people feel like protesting is evil because they're gonna equate rioting to protesting, where protesting is fucking protected. You should be able to protest, right, to get your message. Yeah, Sorry, that I feel like they're trying to equate it together so that moving forward. Whenever the government wants to fuck around, people are being like, uh, you know, what am I going to start a war now? Am I going to fucking do this? You know, they're bringing in the army. When a protest and a riot are two different fucking things, and they're trying right. to m milk it together. I don't like this shit. I find it fucking suspicious. I don't like the div I don't like divisive identity politics. Well, you know, yeah, and, and that gets back. Don't you think that gets back to the media that tries to make it like that? There's that's so why I hate the media. No matter how hard they try to make me judge someone or dislike someone based on color or anything, it's not going to happen. Right. I'm not a doofus. You can't trick me into hating someone. You can't do it. Yeah. It just makes yeah. me not like you because you're disingenuous and you're, yeah, and you're, but that's you're full what, of fuckery. That's why I'm going to use a word you're not used to hearing. You're the minority. You're a minority because you can trick a lot of people. I saw one thing that is laughable. They showed like uh, when Trump was right about something, of course, Fox News is like, Trump was right. Fucking, it was so obvious he was right. CNN had to admit it. You know what the headline was? What? Trump not wrong about. Not Trump right. <laughs> Trump not wrong. That's funny. That's it's hysterical. <laughs> it's hysterical. We should be that funny. We're going to lose our job to this media. Yeah, yeah, Fucking, man. It's, it's ins and you watch it, you're like, what the fuck? And, and, and that's my only hope. It's like, it's like Twitter, social media will keep catching people because I'm telling you, that's starting to be... And even that, I can't believe there's like, did you see the video going around now of some guy on a bicycle that that gets off it and he wrestles like these these girls were putting up flyers to commemorate the death of George Floyd. Oh, I saw the guy on the bike. That, that looks so fake. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. And, and and he didn't even leave at the end of it, did he? he yeah, he, he he threw the guy's phone down. He attacked him and then he left. But everyone in that video looks ridiculous. But even that, like, I don't. Why do you? Let's say that that is a real person and those three are real. Let's assume that that entire video is real. What the fuck are you doing? What do you care that they're putting up? Like, I don't understand why people get so um, personally involved in something. You, do you know what I mean? Like they get yeah. in, personally uh, smited. They're like, oh, this is against me. What, what, dude, mind your fucking business. Keep biking. What does it matter? Biking. Say it again. Biking. There's nobody that, on bikes that are fucking doing that shit. And if you can't beat up a guy in bike shorts, you're gayer than him. That's another thing is the fact that he wasn't getting beat up. He was he was attacking the guy with the bike, and the guy was like j holding his phone. Just stop it. Just stop. smack the guy in the face. He was trying to attack. He, he touched your daughter. His daughter. Beat exactly. the shit. I would have thrown him off that fucking bridge. My cat, I'm gonna fucking kill you if I don't. Yeah. If you're threatening a guy's daughter. That guy should go to jail, not not the fucking actor on the bike, ha ha ha. The guy that fucking wouldn't protect his daughter from an absolute stranger. Yeah, I would have fucking thrown him off that bridge. Uh, and and that's the thing. It's like, wouldn't you argue like you don't know what? It's not even that you believe stuff anymore. You want to believe stuff. It's like I hope this. I read so many stories. I'm like, I hope this is true. How sad is that? It's yeah. like, wow. I hope that really happened. That's I hope there's how, some. I hope there's some good out there. Done. 
I hope there's some good out there. Yeah, I think, dude, I, there's, I think there's we're going to come to a watch, place. Watch. You see the, the cat? Let me see the cat. Ha! <laughs> it's cameo of the day. Say hi, Six. Say hi. See, how could you say? If oh, my dog's running fucking, around. If someone got in this cat's face, and I'm a pussy, not like you, I'd be like, get the fuck away from my cat. I'd be yeah, like, are you insane? Yeah. Anyway, sorry. To, sorry, she was just sitting there being cute. All right, everyone's going to look at you if you're on camera. Just uh, threw her out the window. Jesus Without Christ. Air! There's the couch there. Um, it's, I don't know, we're in a weird time. Uh, I'm glad that you're still making jokes. I'm still making jokes. Uh, you have to. Sometimes there's there's backlash for stupid shit on Twitter that I see and I'll, and it's always like phony. You ever notice that shit that the people that cry the most about nonsense are the people that are just fake. They're they're just finding something to be outraged about. And they're like, look, it's not just black people. I too am outraged. Shut up. It's not about you, Whitey. Shut the fuck up. I'm they outraged. Can't this wait is offensive. To be victims. They can't wait to be victims. I don't know what the fuck it is, dude. I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm very happy that we're. Uh, like Tim Dillon, like all these comics are finding ways to monetize uh, themselves be and not fall vic not be able to fall victim to cancel right. culture anymore, right? Yeah. With like alternative, uh, you know, like Compound Media, uh, podcasting networks, uh, Patreon, you know, shit like that. I'm so glad that these things exist and slowly so we're moving more to a system where we could tell these people, you don't like it? Fuck off. That's just it. It's like, I say that in my act. It's like, it's like, thank God for comedy clubs. And, and they're going to come back. I don't care what anyone says. But it's like, the people now, the, the first person not to laugh is the smartest person in the room. The first person to be offended is some kind of fucking hero. Yeah. And these people, it, like, if I don't think something's funny, I'll be like, I'll yell, that's not funny. But I won't, I, I, I don't sit there and, and, and say, do you watch Jimmy Kimmel? Stop watching. And I'm like, he's not funny. He's not funny. He's just, he's just a guy that fucking, and he's a fucking coward now, backpedaling on the black face he did. There's oh, nothing, Jimmy Fallon you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, what did yeah. I say? Kimmel. But I mix them up all Kimmel's the time. Kimmel's another too. kind of douchebag, but Fallon's the fucking worst. But it's like people that, that don't think shit is funny now try and can't. They're like, you're not. No, that's not funny. It's fucking funny. It's fuck. And, and what people like need to realize, someone said it and you can't convince me otherwise. It's like it's like all social media, as much as the videos, I think help, it also fucking paralyzes people because, oh, my God, was everyone ready for Blackout Tuesday where I just put up a black screen on Instagram and that makes it better? It doesn't. It doesn't do anything other than make you feel like. And the best one was someone put a picture of. Did you see it? Chrissy, re, Chrissy Mayer re, retweeted. I'm sure plenty of people did. It's Ralph Wiggum yeah. with a black screen over his face. And it just says, I'm helping. Yeah, that was perfect. Stop. Yeah. They're like, well, you know, I I uh, I said I put up a BLM post. I don't care. I'm nice. To, I, like, I love all my black. Yeah, yeah that's Both what I'm saying. Is just don't be. How, how about instead of trying to show me that? Because I had this uh, a girl was uh, messaging me on Instagram. One uh, one of the people who I met, she had came to one of my shows at Just for Laughs last year. And she became a fan, started checking out the podcast. And she said, I'm fucking tired of all these people. Because uh, it's mostly white people. So I guess she was like, what the fuck are they doing? Posting this shit. And then I thought about it. And I go, you're fucking right. Because most of the people that I see in my feed, they're not... They're not comedians. They're not podcasters. They don't have a fan base. They just have their friends and family, right? Right. So who are you showing this to? These are your friends. If you have a racist piece of shit friends like that, tell them to fuck off. Yeah. What, who are you trying to show I'm a good... I don't give a shit. To me, I will know if you're a cunt or not. This isn't going to make you a good fucking person. Why don't you do nope. something you can? Like, there's there's some GoFundMe stuff that I, I that I um, put money on and I uh, shared on Twitter because I thought that would be helping. Like, the guy whose house they destroyed... Remember the guy was, uh, yesterday? Look and it surpassed the GoFundMe. The GoFundMe was like hundred something. He's at like two, three hundred k. Uh, it was in Detroit. They like looted and burned down his fucking house and shit like that. Um, right. Yeah. So so people lost a lot of stuff during this time, right? Some by accident, oh, yeah. some by looters. So if you can help, that's how you fucking help. Not by oh, yeah. saying I'm a good person. I don't believe you. Well, and that's just it. The protests, like you see it, like these fucking looters that are ruining everything. And and the perfect example is. You know, the looters are the 1% of shit, like the, but you make every protester look bad, like yeah. all cops look bad. But imagine you're some store owner that somehow mom and pop store, because if you loot a fucking Target or a Saks Fifth Avenue, it's not like the fucking wealthy white owner flies in on a helicopter from his private island and say, oh my God. But 
You know, like he hasn't. But when you fucking loot the mom and pop store that somehow, somehow was still open. This is the thanks they get for for managing to survive the coronavirus shutdown, which bankrupted so many of them. You fucking rob them. Be like, this will fucking stop fucking uh, bad cops. No, it won't. It will fucking it will fucking galvanize their fucking, you know, narrative. See, they're animals. They're yeah. stupid animals that attack each other. That's and, what they and, want. And it yeah. doesn't help. Yeah, that's what they want. They want to show. Uh, last week when we had the protests here, they went down. The protests finished peacefully, right? And then like two hours later, rioters, right? Obviously, right. you're not fucking protesters. Went and started tearing shit up downtown. And um, Poseidon went down with the GoPro. He, I have oh, footage God. here. I'm making a the video. you put that poor kid through. Dude, he wanted to go. He went and then gave me did the you, footage. Did you make him do the Die Hard 2 sandwich board that says, I hate <laughs> Edwards? Did you make him do no, that? Did, but <laughs> when I put this video up, there's one sad part where he goes to a store. He's like, look at this. They fucking destroyed this restaurant. And the Chinese guy who owns it was there. And he's like, why did they do this? I just reopened after so many weeks because of the because yeah. of the coronavirus. He goes, I opened last week. What did I do? Why did they? And just hearing that, you're like, Fuck, man, that is so shitty. Like, the guy's like, what the fuck did I do? I didn't kill anyone. I fucking, yeah. I've been suffering, you know, with the coronavirus thing. I just came back to open the fucking store. And they... This is a guy that escaped fucking, that, that survived immig- that survived immigration. He survived coronavirus. He survived Godzilla. Yeah, he's and building now, yeah. And now this. And now a bunch of suburban kids went down there and destroyed his fucking <laughs> restaurant because he's contributing to white supremacy somehow. It's yeah. illogical. And I see this on Twitter a lot, too, where they'll invent an enemy. You know, Gino, you'll make a post about something. You'll be like, I don't yeah. know, I fucking, I love waffles. And then they'll be like, he says he loves waffles because everyone knows that black people love waffles. And that means he's making fun of black people because he's trying to push a white supremacist. Just crazy narratives. Yeah. And then instead of having one friend to be like, yeah, that is stupid. They're all like, yep, yep, you're right. This guy's fucking crazy. He's a Nazi. And then they continue. And then they feel accomplished like, we fought the enemy, an enemy that they made up, something that doesn't even exist, but they without feel accomplished ever leaving their fucking without couch ever leaving the fucking phone. couch. And they fought nobody. They literally attacked someone for no fucking reason. They're like, we did good. Yeah, We're on the right but side don't of history. You think- and I, we've like, and that's the other thing this pandemic has done. Like, we, nor, we, we're usually joking around being idiots. We're talking about this for fucking forty minutes. But don't you think, like, that's the beauty of it? Like, like as things get back to normal, this, this is like, I'm more into politics than ever now because it's been shoved in my fucking face. But when life is normal, I don't pay attention to this. Yeah. I'm gambling on sports. I'm drinking with you. I'm fucking doing my dick jokes, and it will get back to that. It will. Yeah, it dude. will. I think I think it's affecting me. And don't get me wrong, I've never felt healthier. But I went to the doctor. I told you to get a corona, a a, a COVID antibody test. Yeah. Like no, and your and your cholesterol, which some this had to be a miss. It went up like 50 points in the past like fucking four months. I'm like, that's wrong. Give me another month because I did something wrong. But now, now I'm like, you know, I'm in my head and I felt great until he told me that. Now I'm like, my chest hurts. I'm light. You know, everything. The second he told you, you're like, uh, can you oh, get a Lord, white I'm doctor fucking- in here? Can you get a yeah. white doctor and- in here? Because this is. <laughs> that's why I never go to them. But, and I love my doctor, don't get me wrong. But here, like, I'm just not a doctor guy. I'm an old Italian, but I'll tell you this. It's like, I'm, I'm telling Berg, I'm like, I'm honestly starting to think because I've always believed this. Like, we're comedians. We get in front of people. And I can do all the podcasts in the world. Yeah. I can do all the fucking, you know, uh, you know, in hot water morning shows in the world. I could do write all this stuff I want, but there's no replacement for the genuine physical, it's physical energy exchange you get yep. when you're on stage fucking with a room full of 10, 40, a hundred, five thousand people. That fucking like I'm, I'm my bot, my soul is is fucking desperately in need of that, which is why I cannot wait for tomorrow. I cannot. Did, did wait. you do any of those fucking uh, parking lot shows? No, I did not. I Berg think did too. And did Florentine? I think that's why I bailed on the one tomorrow. Because we had Florentine on on two drink minimum. I think he may have done the same. Because he said something about that. What he, what he said was pretty cool. I don't know if it's the same one that Aaron did. I forgot to ask Aaron where he said. I don't think it was. Florentine's was badass. You know what it had? He said that it was like a drive-in, so every car had the speaker in their car, so yeah. you can he- so they can hear you perfectly, and then they're laughing, and they won't step on the punchlines because even though you're saying it while they're laughing, they have the speaker in the car, so they can hear everything. And ca- and that's I'm not saying that's the way comedy should be. I fucking love the club, but that's a good alternative. And when he said that, I was like, fuck, that's interesting. Like yeah. the the drive-in feel. Berg, because I wonder if that's the one AC jokes, because that's the one Berg was supposed to do this weekend. That's the one Levy did. I wouldn't doubt that's the one Florentine did. They asked me to do it. Uh, but they asked me to do it when they were calling into our show. That could have been political. But I don't even. That could have been political. Yeah, it could have been political <laughs> or just the right thing to say. But I'm telling you, I can't wait for tomorrow. Like, we're losing our mind. And then, of course, we're like, well, we got to do it at five. 
be, I'm going to wind up staying at the guy's house. Oh, wait, there's the curfew there's no up, right? There's no to try and battle back to beat curfew home from upstate New York. You know, it's insane. Yeah, you know what you should do to get a GoPro? It's going to be like the Warriors. You try to give back home. <laughs> we yeah. got to give back yeah, to Coney right. Island. <laughs> you, you, you and fucking Berg shirtless with the vests, with the leather vests, oh, running away Mark from Mark different... Corelli will make a meme about it. Yeah, you're running away from Antifa. You're running away from the cops. <laughs> oh, I love it. And I love Torelli, by the way. All week, I'm like, just putting, keep putting us in cop memes. Keep fucking doing the Torelli picks this week with us. Yeah, he put cops. us in SWAT. It. He put us in SWAT uh, in a SWAT thing. Um, on a, just a random SWAT thing, like on Tuesday when we're going. Nobody even thought about it, and it started a whole fucking uh, thing with with these two idiots. They were coming like, "You guys are for police brutality. You guys are just the mental gymnastics to make the leap that because a fan put you in a SWAT uniform, that means that well, you're for first of all us comics." comics that want less government yeah. are for it's so insane that leap but again it was one of those moments of i'm here too why is everyone talking about black people i exist i i'm offended yeah. shut up this isn't oh, your moment I'm losing my mind with all lives matter and people are like here's the difference i don't care anymore for i don't i don't care i'm not saying like i'm not saying black lives don't matter no, no, yeah. i'm not saying they matter less but i just don't care i literally put it on because i'm sick of seeing anytime there's a post a thing i put it on my uh Inst i said i'm only saying this once it's, it was in my instagram story i don't want to hear it again stop being offended by everything the all uh black lives matter doesn't mean black lives matter only it means black lives matter also that's what they're fucking saying that's it the argument yeah. they're not if you say yeah i'm for this guy this black guy not getting beat up it does not mean that you should get beat up instead it's that nobody should get beat up. That's all. Yeah. But these fucking fake fights, these fake fights. It's like me looking yeah. out for you being like, shit, man, um, he's got diabetes. Let's get him a, a, an EpiPen. What about me? I have diabetes. You want me to die? I never said I want you to die, stupid. I'm saying yeah. this guy's at risk right now. Let's just help him. That's what I'm fucking saying. Yeah. They need to change it to all lives. Black people need to change it to all lives matter. But we're just here to remind you black lives are part of all lives. They should, that's Because that's what everyone's saying. You know what they should change it to? All lives matter except assholes. Yeah. Who's going to be against that? We're black people have lives that matter. No, you're saying I just can't. It's, <laughs> over, it's exhausting, yeah. isn't it? It's just exhausting anymore. Where do you read the only? But, dude, if you want to, uh, I think if you're... If you don't want to dictate your life by, by logic and you want to get pissed off, dude, you will cut out certain information. You will add what you want and you will make this narrative. That's what it looks like to me. Because I'll admit if when I'm wrong, and it happens often. I'm telling you, Gino. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I am wrong funny. often. Like, and I'll be like, yeah, I fucked been, up on that. I didn't know the... But dude, these fucking idiots, and they're mostly on the left, uh, don't... Actually, on the right, too. You'll see... You, you fall into this ideology... And you just don't want to admit that you're wrong. And then it causes, you know, just anything that fits your narrative. That's what they're doing. Right. That's what they're fucking doing, Jay. It's it's just exhausting. And I, like, I can't wait as like, it's got to get back to normal because, and by the way, where's Fauci been during all this? Where's Fauci been now that people are this far from each other yelling and, and, and no one's like, no one's COVID's not a thing anymore. You're not allowed to fucking if this was happening a week ago yeah. without the protesting, without the fucking Floyd incident, if people were getting this close, they'd be arrested. They would be wasn't wasn't it a week ago video surface of some. I don't know if it made it to you, but it was pretty big here in New York. It happened at a, in a, at a shop, right? Some woman wasn't wearing a mask and they were yelling pig. They were just yelling the most terrible fucking things at her for not wearing a fucking mask. It was insane. Yeah, people fall into the mob mentality fucking easily. You see that shit? They're all, as soon as uh, the cops, I don't know if you guys had it there, but here people were calling the cops on their neighbors. It's like, oh, you have more than three people at your house. They don't live there. And they're fucking ratting their neighbors out. People fall into, I think, I think honestly, shitty people believe that if they join the state, they're exempt and protected. They don't fucking realize that this, if you help authoritarians, Nazis, all that shit, they're not going to protect you later. They're still going to come after you when it's your fucking turn, stupid. Fight yeah. for the people. Don't fight for the state, you dumbasses. Yeah, and all these assholes think they're on these. They think they're in the fucking Hunger Games. Yeah, because they're standing there. You know, they're standing there saying like the protest uh, was. They marched across the Manhattan Bridge, and they got here, and the cops were like, uh, "You can't go through." It's like, look, it's it, we can't let you in unless you're essential worker because of curfew. And some way, well, please let us in. This is so important. Go the fuck home. 
go the fuck home and when curfew's over be good to everyone i am good to everyone well keep doing that and let's yeah. hope it gets contagious because that's the only way you know and they act they're like <laughs> begging for their fucking moment to like oh we're gonna overthrow nothing needs to be overthrown the co the system is working they're going to jail and by the way let's play a game they yeah. said it on fox news because this is the narrative. What you see on Twitter happens everywhere in every moment in every state. Mm -hmm. How many black people were – how many unarmed black people were killed in the past year by police? How many? Oh, I don't know. Ten. Really? Because 11 people have died recently just in the in the riots that I oh, know yeah. of. Ten. Oh, yeah. Of oh, all uh, colors. How many cops are getting – oh, yeah. well, they deserve it. No, they don't. The cops are getting what they deserve because they're going to jail. But that's just it. It's like they sit there screaming. It's like – Oh, stop shooting us. No, and if you hear the stories about the 10th, one woman, fucking, it was horrible, and that cop is being charged with The one who went in the wrong fucking house and shot her? Do you I remember heard, that shit? No, I, was it the wrong house? I just heard some woman called the cops because their neighbor's door was open, and the, and the cops were like, all right, we'll go check when they got, when they, the woman didn't know her door's open, she saw cops coming, so she got a gun, cop just shot her. That cop's going to jail. But if you hear the other nine stories, like like one, they're like, this guy was unarmed. The guy was naked. The guy was absolutely <laughs> naked running around, and he, he lunged at the cop's gun. They were fighting. He got shot and died. Another guy fucking came out of a, after robbing a liquor store. The cop said, freeze. He charged right at him. It's like, and don't get me wrong. It's not about them being black. It's about them being fucking criminals that happen to be black. Like, the, the same thing's happened with white people, but no. Let me tell you, I don't know if you know this, and thank God. You've given me this platform, Pantelis. <laughs> what you saw in that video is what happens in every moment, in every state, to black people from white cops. That's what people seem to think yeah, is going yeah. on. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But it, again, it's the media thing because in the beginning, when they start, when the protest, when they did the first protest before the uh, anarchists got there and started setting fire to everything, right? All right. they were saying was uh, they wanted justice. They wanted those guys to actually be tried. Because they weren't, the guy was at his house. Remember, he was getting Uber Eats delivered and they were blocking Uber Eats from going to the cop's house. So that's what they wanted. And they were talking about Which reform. story is this? I'm sorry. Okay, so the guy Chauvin, oh, he okay. was still yeah, yeah. at home and they were outside of his house also protesting in the beginning. And they were blocking. Every time an Uber Eats driver would come, they would tell him who the guy is. And he's like, fuck that. I don't want to deliver food to him. So that's what they started protesting. Then, dude, the, the Antifa guys got there took over and started a fucking shit show. So yeah. in the beginning, no one was saying, white people are trying to kill us. All police are bad. That's not what, they, they weren't saying illogical shit. But the second it was taken over by Antifa, the media, this and that, it spun the narrative and it became black versus white, blue yeah. versus black, blue versus yeah. black, white, just crazy shit. It, and, and I'm telling you, it's I. People are like, how long is this going to last? I'm like, it's going to, first of all, there's been no more looting. There's The looting's done. <laughs> it's done. There's nothing left to and loot. And you can protest all you want. I don't care. And you can even fucking protest by breaking the curfew. I have no problem with that. Yeah. I don't. I'm all for protesting. But, yeah, all for it. Like, that, that, it proves the system works, yeah. you know? But they, they, they try and find the one video. It's like, oh, my God, look at this guy. I love it. They, they, there's a video I saw of some guy, like, runs up in the cop's face, and he just fucking pushes. He's like, get back. It's like, oh, my God, look what he get back. It's like, stop. He's just yelling. He's like, make your video, but people can see what's going on. Get back. Fucking oh, I can't I can't just stand how people just want people want to be victims and you can't say they can't be saved. They can't be saved, man. Look, they want to be victims. They did it like, oh my God, look at all the there's so much like you wake up every day and and there's so much like like as comics, we wake up every day, we think we're getting away with shit. I'm yeah. waiting for someone to knock on my door and say, like, you can't do this anymore. You cannot possibly make a living fucking drinking and, and fucking telling dick jokes with your friends and i'd be like yeah i know but other people wake up that have everything they're like oh there's there i need to find something because they hate their fucking boring lives like i need to find some conflict that i can <laughs> be a fucking martyr in you know what i think we're, we're we can both agree that uh first of all this has agitated both of us right now so that's why i'm yeah. gonna change topic everyone's watching the same thing we need to agitate ourselves i want to ask you something else um, it just came in my head um, cause you were talking about, uh, just government, state, privacy, conspiracies. You know what I did before we started this, uh, unrelated to the podcast, but I saw that Rogan, uh, start, it doesn't use Chrome. He was using a new browser called brave and I installed, brave. yeah, brave. And I installed it myself. It's like some kind of cryptocurrency, uh, um, adjacent browser. Um, right. I, maybe it's a crypto company that started. I'm not sure. Uh, it's using like the same source code as Chrome. So you can easily, uh, take over all of your like uh, bookmarks. profiles, bookmarks, which is what I did. It seems to work. 
And this one doesn't track your shit. Like, because Chrome, the reason why it's so heavy is because it tracks everything you do. This one doesn't track your stuff. It's supposed to be one of these privacy. So I just installed it, Brave. But what's the cryptocurrency angle? Uh, I think I got to look at the settings. I think that if uh, they give you Brave rewards. So I think if you go to certain sites or whatever, if you use it a lot, you, you win cryptocurrency or whatever the fuck it is. So I'm going to take a look at that. But you don't have to. That's just an, it's like how Chrome, you don't have to use Gmail. That's great. And it's called Brave. It's called Brave, yeah. And I tweeted out first before I installed it just to make sure because because my fans are fucking, uh, they're in the know. They, right. They're the oh, ones yeah, who got me to get a VPN. To yeah, so I asked, I go, uh, is it worth over Chrome? And people already commented and they're like, that or, or, or Opera, either one of those, you get rid of these. Opera? I'm, I'm yeah. Brave Browser Review. There you go. I'll look at that. Brave yeah. Browser. So that they stop tracking your shit. Because they do, they have, you ever look at your, uh, I don't know if you use Google, or if, what kind of phone you have, but I've looked at my uh, history, the map stuff. It is freaky. It'll show you what day, what time, where were you, how long you stayed there, whose house you were at, what restaurant you're. That's some fucking Orwellian shit. Yeah. yeah oh like yeah. That. It, the 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 words I never heard of before, and they become commonplace. Orwellian dystopian. Those yeah. Are the words that that we use now all the time. Yeah, because now we're starting to realize we're like shit. We kind of signed up for this without you know because everyone. Uh, it's kind of like that that South Park episode where everyone just accepts. The terms and conditions of iTunes updates because they don't look at yeah, nobody yeah. reads that shit, <laughs> but everyone apparently was reading except for Kyle, and he signs up to be part of the human centipede or the Japanese guy <laughs> shitting in his mouth. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing. We're all like, yeah, yeah, accept, accept, accept. Yeah. And then without really, we're like, wait a second. You know everything I look at, everywhere I go, who I speak with, what I'm interested in shopping, what I look at online. You're building a psychological profile on me. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's too and much. You don't, like you don't even realize because I, I it's like I can't be bothered, but I'm happy to say it's like it none of it none of this affects me. It really doesn't. I'm sorry. It's like I'm amazed that in the middle of fucking you know a coronavirus, a, a pandemic, and a fucking race war hasn't affected my uh, with the exception <laughs> of stand up, and hopefully that comes to an end tomorrow. Hasn't affected me. It's it's like it's like you you make yourself recession proof if you just are willing to fucking. Just do whatever you fucking love and be fucking poor for a while. And then all of a sudden it's like, I don't need to be rich. I just need yeah. to do what I want. And the universe will keep giving me what I need. And these other people fucking, they're not getting that. They're not. They're like, oh my God, you know what I need? I need to fucking make world peace. You can make world peace by just being peaceful with everyone in your world. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to fucking make some fucking, you know, quote, but that's it. And they're like, no, I got to fucking tell you how to live. I know how to live. I'm you good. can't, you can't, you can't make everyone. You know why? Cause there are cunts out there that you will never oh, change. Yeah. You just got to change your surroundings. Yo, but I wanted to ask you, how's Gum Fridays going? Gum Fridays, didn't, you did Gum Friday, right? Of course right? I did Gum Friday. Who do you think Gum I am? Gum Friday, I, I have to, that's why I had to fucking bump this up and yeah. out. Gum Friday is so much fucking fun. Like, you know, we have, today we have our own, this is like, it's amazing how we're the dumb show on the network, but we, we fucking, it's, it's kind of a, a brilliant stupidity. And in that vein, today we have Michael Malice coming on okay. to show how many of those Cadbury eggs he can fucking eat. And I think I'm going to give, for the first fucking 25, I'm going to give $10 an egg to, to charity. Wait, wait, wait. And you're talking about every, the full-size big eggs? Yeah, the Cadbury, the, 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 the size of the, a regular egg, yeah, Cadbury egg. So Not he's going to eat minimum 25, you think? That's a lot of eggs, bro. He says he can eat, but, but well, that's the thing. I think he can only get 20 at best. But if I say for 25, everyone after 25, I'll give 25 bucks an egg. And by the way, it's going to, to leukemia, which, which uh, you know, is a, a thing close to my heart with my mother. Because, yeah. I, because here's the other thing people aren't realizing. It's a fact. How many people I, – I when, when my doctor went to tell me my cholesterol was a billion, God forbid. When I went to the doctor, I asked him how he was doing. He's like, he's like, I'm worried about all the people that aren't coming in. You know how many people would have gone in before this fucking fake virus? Mm. And 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 had look, you have cancer, but we caught it early. It's gonna be like you're in stage three cancer. It's gonna be more people are going to die because of this than fucking more. Excuse me, watch this. More people that matter. What I'll yeah. say it again. More people that matter because Kevin Brennan said it perfectly. No one put Nana in a nursing home to rehab her for the 2021 season. Okay, <laughs> you gave up on them. You quit on them. And you, what you should be doing instead of fucking crying. And fucking screaming at me to wear a mask is writing a thank you note to the fucking, you know, oh, nursing God. home you put Nana in because they just saved you another three years of fucking bills. You send Don't. your thank you to the Wuhan lab. Exactly. 
That, that's what drives me nuts. Oh, well, you know, like my friend had diabetes, type 2 diabetes. My friend has type 1 diabetes and she's doing fine. Type 2 diabetes are fat fucking people. And you know what? We needed to get rid of you because uh, they were going to start a mayonnaise tax pretty soon. And I pay enough fucking money. Okay. You know, what if malice falls into a diabetic coma? Who's to blame? Look, let's cross our fingers. That's comedy gold, right? Yeah, he, right? He just collapses. Because he's, he's uh, Michael Malice, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. It, it, poke, and I'll just poke him with a stick like Bart Simpson. I love Malice. But, Malice uh, is a good dude, too. He's going to be doing that today. So that's gonna be, but, uh, aside, but Gum Friders are grow, going great. The show's – like, I think they should be uh, – I think they should be making Malice's show like free once a week now just to give people an alternative to this horse shit. But, yeah, we're having a goddamn blast with it, man. We really are. And Berg just ordered hats for the, uh, you know, because we do the tiers. Berg just sent out uh, these really awesome hats. Uh, I got to send one to, to our uh, one of our favorite fans, Tara. You, you know, oh, yeah, uh, the, of course. Martinis, please. We got to send her one. Um, but, yeah, the fans, the fa our fans are fucking the best. Like, that's the other thing I've really enjoyed in all this. Like I, I've been doing I, this other thing I'm doing now that I really love plugging is it's called Hot Mike, and I don't know what the catch is, bro. It's called Hot Mike, and before all this insanity started, it's just Mystery Science Theater 3000 meets live sports. What are you, bro? Oh, she's playing with the bubble wrap. Unbelievable. Uh, and we were doing that, but then when they shut down live sports, they're like, "Well, just do podcasts." So now between Instagram Live, it's just like an Instagram Live, but it's on this app called Hot Mike. And I get to just fucking talk about sports and, 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 and the shows and pandemic while people are commenting. And the fans is the point I'm trying to get to. Our fans are hilarious, aren't yeah. they, Pantels? Like, I laugh more at the shit they say than the shit I say. Dude, I saw it on Twitter when those open micers were trying to fuck around with us because that photo. I was like, because uh, the fans jumped in right away to attack him. Yeah. Fucking even to rally. Yeah. Everyone jumped in. And then um, the fans started kind of insulting them. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a back and forth. And then the fans were hilarious. And yeah. all of the fucking open micers replies were stuff like, I know you are, but what am I? The uh, and I was They're like, the what the worst. fuck? What the it's fuck? Nice. I mean, you're supposed to be a comedian. You, you, I mean, you're cosplaying. You're, you're LARPing as if you're a comic, okay? You have Twitter. You're supposed to be witty. You have time to think of a comeback. And people with nine to five jobs are fucking stoning you to death. What is happening? Because because they're funny people who fucking who have a respect for comedy. Yeah. Like uh, there's a respect, and they're like they're, they're like the funniest people I know. Never. My brother's hilarious. He never did stand up. My friend yeah. Jeff. I tried to put him on stage once. He fucking had a panic attack. Most of the guys and, I and grew I up think, with are hilarious, but they just don't do stand up. Yeah, and I think I think when I first got up here, I, I remember I'm like I can't just go to the cellar and fucking you know talk to these people because I'd say, but I am in a way there and and now people think because they have a podcast with thousands of followers they're Louis CK yeah and these fucking comics they're like they're like well you know what I'm I, I like talking and I'll take a class and I have a political view that's not what makes you a great comedian nope. wanting to make people laugh wanting to fucking give joy and yeah. I know I sound like a Hallmark card but that's but what, that's what it that's is what, that's what it that's is. That's what it's it is. That's what you're thinking of when you shoot. go on stage. You're like, oh, we're gonna have this is gonna be fucking hilarious. And then when they laugh, you laugh. None of this whole I'm proving a point. Ugh. What's the deal with fascists? <laughs> what the That's fuck gold. are you talking about? Can I about? have that bit? That's yeah. cool. Oh, can dude, I? you can have it. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 we just won't do it in the same city at the same time. <laughs> uh, the dumber the better. The the joke that I've been uh, that I was doing, you know, back in the last uh, thing with the pandemic, they're like they're saying black people have a higher percentage of getting coronavirus. I'm like, don't look at me. I stay ten feet away from black people when everyone is healthy. It's <laughs> a good joke. It's, it's very. It's really. It's more of that highbrow comedy you've come to expect from Gino. I had. I had one. That I don't know when we get back if I'm. If it's still going to be relevant. But just because. Remember when they started at first? They were. They were panning everything as a COVID death. Remember in the beginning, the infection rate was oh, always yeah, on the news, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they started saying, well, it's not really the COVID nineteen. It's not killing anyone. It's the the stuff you get because you get COVID. Like pneumonia kills you, not the COVID. And I was like, you can't keep using these excuses like in the 80s nobody said well aids didn't kill anybody it was the beatings behind the nightclubs like you can't <laughs> you can't keep shifting blame you know and i don't know if it's still gonna be relevant when we start oh up again oh my god you know what it's not you should let me take that yeah. that is so that but is I, going to work it's you think it'll work? work i love that joke and i can't wait to say it on stage oh god Berg does a joke now, and, and that's why we're lucky to have the show. Because whenever there's a new fucking Gum Friday guest, I, I just do the panel and set him up with it. But he's like, I, he's like uh, I thought I had corona this morning. I woke up and I couldn't smell breakfast, but then I went downstairs. It turns out my wife just didn't cook it. And then 
And then, and then he goes, and then, then I was really concerned because I'd lost my sense of taste. But no, because by the time I got downstairs, she still hadn't cooked it. Oh. <laughs> and, and the way he does it, I just lose my mind with it. But I, I think these will all be funny. Beating behind the nightclub, behind the nightclub will always be funny. <laughs> you know? the be- it it's the beatings and, that's funny. It is. Beatings is a funny word. It's the beatings. Funny. And plus, I thought you were going to say it was like the fucking in the ass. You're like, no, the beating. It's like I'm sitting there like, right, they got fucking. You, know, you just you just ratcheted it up five. No, it was all the beatings behind the nightclub. That killed, because being gay is a sin. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I love the surprise. Well, I mean, that's what we do, right? It's the fucking surprise. I love, sometimes I'll set someone up where they're like, I know where he's taking this offensive route. And I'm like, nah, bro. <laughs> I'm coming up behind you. <laughs> but that's why I always say Jezelnik is so funny. Because every yes. comic you look at, like, you're like, this guy was influenced by someone else. I, I can't find anyone he was influenced by. But his, he deadpans, he slowly walks you through the joke. And then just when you get to the end, you're like, finally, and you jump to the punchline you think it is, and it's not. Yeah, it's I love all that. the way over here. Oh, it's it's like I got into a fight with my girlfriend once, and it was, and I'm gonna butcher it, it's still gonna be funny. He's like, he's like, and it, then it got so bad, they called the cops on us, and then I had that embarrassing moment when the cops showed up at my door and I answered it and had to tell them, You wasted your time. I already hit her. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what's funny is because you know they have uh, a, a lot of idiots that uh, like comedy critics. They say when you make jokes like that, you're a bad person. He's a guy that I I never met. I have, I've never met him in person, but right. people who do know him all say he's like the fucking nicest dude, right? Of course. It doesn't come from like look at the crazy shit I say. I'm not fucking mean to anyone, but the crazy shit I say on stage that because I find funny, right, does yeah. not reflect your everyday fucking. I'm not gonna go beat people up. No, but that's just it. It's like if like. People always say, Gene, like, were your parents funny growing up? And, and you realize that as you get older, you're like, you don't know. Your parents are just your parents. And you think whatever you have growing up, everyone had. And and if your dad wakes up every day and punches your mom in the face, he's an asshole. But you think that's normal. If my dad ever hit my mother, uh, like, actually, I, I, I used to say this in the act. Well, I used to. I will when it comes. But I'm like. If my dad ever came home and said to me and my brother, I've had it, boys, I'm going to hit your mother, he would have been like, this guy is fucking hysterical. Oh, you're serious? Because that bitch will fucking kill you. Are you nuts? <laughs> and that's why I do jokes about domestic violence, because it's hilarious to me. I don't mean it's hilarious like hitting a woman. It's hilarious that any man in this day and age thinks hitting him, hitting a woman or a child makes him a better... Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it, it, it helps I mean, the situation. It makes you a man. It doesn't. Yeah, but I know someone I don't care. Yeah, that's not why. I'm not do. saying it to make fun of... I'm making fun of the scenario that I'm putting in your head. I'm not making fun of your aunt that takes beatings. It's not what yeah. I'm saying. I'm saying it's the scenario that I'm putting in front of you of this guy thinking his marriage is in shambles, uh, his kids are doing well in school, there's only one way to fix it. Yeah. Beatings. That's they, the funny part. It's a, oh, what's the line? You don't. I always say you don't hit women, and you don't hit them hard. Because if you hit them too hard, they black out and they lose the lesson. And then, then <laughs> you're back at square lesson. one. You're back at square one. Then you're getting cold eggs the next day. That's on you. That's, that's on you. <laughs> that's not her fault. Yeah, you, know, you unlearned her. But the, the people can't wait to, to sit there and it, it's the it's the old virtue signal. Hitting yeah. women is wrong. I know. Yeah, we We're know. Who the fuck is for? Yeah. Yeah, we're making fun of men that hit women. Remember when you were a kid? Like you thought you could change a person by making fun of them? That's all we're still doing. Yeah. That's all we're still doing. I'm not fucking handing out tips at a fucking, you know, woman shelter going, nice job. Get back in there and give them another shot. Here's a cookbook. Do it better. I'm not doing that. But that's what people want. They're like, oh, my God. I, I, I think hitting women's wrong. Well, you're better than all of us. All yeah. of us were laughing, waiting for a woman to come in and get punched in the face. Yeah, because this was a meeting. You didn't realize. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this was actually a, a meeting. We're trading this tips. This is not a stand-up I, I show. Yell, boo, boo! I would boo. Fucking idiots. Fucking idiots. See, we both. I like the the same shit still agitates us. Yeah, well, I mean, because we're just look, we're frustrated. Look, because we because we win. We got through just telling jokes and being good to people, and now people are like, it's not enough. It is enough. You have to do more. I do plenty. I do. I, I'm good to everyone I meet. I really am. Yeah, but you have to fucking look. I give. I don't care. But I'm not gonna sit here and fucking play your game where there is no winner. Yeah, there's I hate no end that. game to this. There will never be. No matter what I do, have you done enough? And 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 again, if you think posting a black screen fucking makes you some kind of hero you're the problem because nothing's getting done i know there's people out there that posted it and said fuck all right we just ended fucking racism this is amazing what a, re- uh, what a relief uh, yeah. yeah the endorphin rush they got when they 
fucking posted that black screen. Oh my God. At first I thought my Instagram was fucked up. And then I realized, and I was like, I, and here's the thing. I was like, of course I fucking care about black. I care about, I don't want to, but why would I felt like Kramer with the ribbon thing? Uh, I was like, I don't want to put it on because I love Fantel. You're like me. Everything is a Simpson South Park. Yeah, because I saw it and and I felt like Kramer. Like, why will he not wear the ribbon? Because I was like, I don't have to prove to you that I don't want people to get killed. That's of of course I I don't want people to get killed. I'm fucking all about liberty. Yeah, my conservative views are on fucking uh, the economy. <laughs> All you know, I, I want people to be fucking safe and free to do what the fuck they want to do. Why the hell would I want to die? But I, I'm not gonna give in to this mob mentality that it won't make a difference. It's just gonna make everyone high five each other, be like, we fucking stop racism. So I felt like Kramer, the whole ribbon thing, you know, like he, yeah, that's a perfect. Why won't he wear the ribbon? I was like, fuck you and your ribbon, stupid. Oh, it's the same thing. Like, look, I wear the mask out of fucking, you know, respect for all the, because I just can't be bothered. But it's like, say it all the time. If me and you were on a subway sitting next to each other and we both cough and you look at me and be like, hey, you got to be careful. Get that cough check. But I look at you and scream, you could kill me. You would be like, why are you even outside? Yeah. Go the fuck inside. Get inside, you fucking cunt. Yeah. Take your meds, dummy. Yeah. It's like, it's like, don't go. Like, I, I used to say to my brother, and again, I'm so, when this started, when, when this started, like, you know, when you're reading the numbers, which is just all the media, when you're reading the numbers of they're just they're just telling you, oh, here's a huge number of the people that are sick. And here's a huge number of the people that have died. They don't tell you it's it's 90 percent fucking nursing homes. And I'm exact. But you see these numbers to scare you. Like when you finally go outside, you're expecting to see people lying dead in the street, a yeah. green fog that you have to wear. a mat, And it's not that, you know, but it, when I first saw the numbers, I was going into work every day. And I would call my brother. And he's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, because Berg's staying home. I need to be. And then after about a month, I, I called my brother. I said, look, Pete, I know I'm not Walter Cronkite. I'm the furthest thing. But the fact I get to sit behind that desk every day, because I've earned that. And this isn't, you know, I'm fucking living, living in my car. Down, I've earned that fucking seat at the desk. And I love it. I'm like, if I were to die, and I'm not. But if I were, you, you wouldn't be like, oh, my. You'd be like, no, you're thrilled. You're happy with what you're doing. And that's it. It's like. It's like the more you go out, the more you realize it's like I was so mad that I didn't have the COVID antibodies and I should be thrilled that I never had COVID. But I'm like, I just wanted to fucking be done. I wanted to be. But it's like these people, Berg, who was in Delaware the whole time, is just getting back into it. He's just I'm like, this is what you have to go through. Yeah. Did you have this like you wake up because you're in Toronto, right? you're in Quebec, right? Montreal. Yeah. Montreal. So you wake up every day and you're like, you're like, was it by the way, was it bad there? Uh, this is Montreal is the hotbed in Canada. It's the worst. It shows how much I know. And you wake up every day with a, you wake up, not, but you wake up, you're like, have a cough or your muscle hurts. You're like, oh my God, I have COVID. Oh, oh every God, dude, COVID? every day in the beginning, I was so fucking paranoid. You have no idea. Yep. I was panicking. And then, you know, slowly I was like, wait, do I have it now? And I had the flu when it first started and I lost my shit. I was like, oh fuck, am I going to die? What is this stuff? You know, it was just fresh in the news. And, you know, as time went on, you, know, you I, I get a cough. I, I always think, oh, shit, I caught the coronavirus. And then I was like, I don't know anymore because this has been around from, they, they closed everything in March, but apparently this started coming end of November, beginning of December to North America, right? Now, yeah. I've performed so many shows since then. The day, the, the same week, I remember Thursday they started talking about it, and then Friday they closed everything. On the Wednesday of that week, I, I had done two shows back-to-back at, at two different bars, so I went, uh, the second was at Mike's Club, right? And between yeah. the shows, I must have seen and, and you know, shook hands with like over 100 people, okay? Yep. So you're telling me that I that those were my nights since November, let's say. <laughs> so I've met and shook hands with hundreds of people since then, okay? Maybe fucking over 1,000. I'm yep. the lucky son Who of a bitch. Who this far from yeah. your face. You're telling me I'm the lucky son of a bitch that didn't get it? It doesn't make sense to me. So either I got it, I'm, you know, I didn't know, I got the antibodies, but... To, to be in those many people, because I remember that week, I was like, oh, fuck, I probably caught it. I saw something, but I shook hands. But it didn't start here, dummy. It started in fucking December. So do you think you survived this whole time? Talk, because that's what we do, right? We keep seeing new people every fucking night. Yeah. You think we didn't catch it? You know, so I bet you when I get, because I want to go for the antibody test, if I have antibodies, it didn't happen in March. I must have fucking caught that shit early on. It, it It's insane that, People are so worried about, I'm not getting a vaccine. I'm not. And people are so worried about all this shit that they don't really, it's what those two doctors out of Bakersfield said, which is another thing that now we're getting on the COVID thing. It's like, it's like whenever one side asked questions, one side was asking questions. The other side was yelling, you're stupid. Yeah. You're stupid. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? Like, and, and that's And what now it, they're that's agreeing with them. 
They, you know what's what fucked that? up about those two doctors? They they were uh, blocked off YouTube. This remember that because they yeah. had a contrary opinion. But now the narrative changed. They're agreeing with them. They're like, yeah, the okay. death toll is super low. They're agreeing with fucking them. It's crazy. All you do is listen to like, and even then they're like yelling, and they were so calm. They're like, you're saying you know more than Doctor Fauci, and the guy goes, no, no, I'm saying Doctor Fauci. At first he goes, no, no, Doctor Fauci has far more experience than either of us, but we're saying you have to let the virus breathe and give us numbers. And we have more experience with these numbers than him. And what we're seeing is, so you're saying, yeah, yeah. so you're saying you don't need a vaccine. All I'm saying is when you have a baby, it's in the placenta. You don't take it out and put it in bubble wrap and say, work on your immune system. You say, here, expose yourself to everything. And that's what we've been doing. And, and if you're, and well, you don't need a healthy immune system. You need to stay inside. No, nope, that will weaken your immune system and you'll get this and it will give you more numbers and people it's, but they, but when you sit there and just, and make the argument like, no, you're wrong. And then when that movie pandemic came out and I'm not saying I agree or disagree with, I believe a lot of it, but the there's, first thing there's, say, there's, there's uh, stuff that's a hundred percent true. It's just facts. But then there's a lot of nonsense in that too. That's what discredited. They should have just stuck to the facts. You know what I mean? Like, because oh, yeah. there's a lot of suspicious shit. What, like the the whole um, copywriting, the get, getting the patent on the G, on the. Um... And the fact that you said what you just said proves like th that's what people need to be here. Like, yeah. there's so much good, but the, and I said the same thing. There's a lot of bullshit. Yeah. And that's what an intelligent person would say. But when this doctor, why do you believe any of this? This woman was arrested. You're stupid to believe it. She was released three days later. They dropped all the charges. Yeah, but and, even and if. Even if that part, even that's what I'm saying is even if she's crazy and she stole materials, this and that, that's I'm not debating any of that. But no. factually, it is true. They do hold the patent so that it, when uh, the, the, the vaccine comes out or any of the antivirus they could do, any company that's working on it has to pay Fauci, Bill Gates, all the people that are invested yep. in that patent. So they are making money off this. That's not that's not a theory. That's facts. We know that that's facts. It's it, it's business. Yeah, it's, it's just business. business. But they do it. It's not just for this. They do it all the time, right? Somebody uh, takes the patent down so that they could make money off the vaccine. It's not a new thing. So that part is true. So that's the part where you should be weary, right? You yeah. It, it's but everyone's. Uh, it's this whole global thing. Is I have to agree or disagree globally. That's why people fall into political wings. By the way, like I have to. Don't fall for any wing, you fucking dummy. Why would you want to have to? forcibly agree with every point someone makes that is stupid yeah. that is fucking stupid and that that's why like i didn't vote for trump but i sure didn't vote for hillary but yeah, what what made me lose my mind is that night when i was doing the fucking we were doing the election coverage and oh it was great because if you saw it i'm sitting between cumia and DePaulo, and every time i ask a question about politics because i never paid attention to paul's like do you even live in this country i don't fucking but as i'm watching it, it becomes so obvious that these channels are like they're, they're just pushing Hillary down your throat and she's yeah. an evil cunt. Yeah, she's yeah. an evil cunt. It's like, I'm not a pro Trump. I'm getting there now, but it's like, I just am so anti. And now you're going to put Biden in who's senile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's a, who's a <laughs> push. And, and the other thing that gets me is like, you cannot convince me that fucking the country of the, our country, the U S and no. the city of Manhattan, this, excuse me, the state of New York, either you're looking what, what Trump did and said he did a great job, and then you have to look at what Cuomo did and said he did a great job, or vice versa, and say both of these guys suck. But when people are going, Trump was great, Cuomo sucked, or Trump sucked and Cuomo was great, no, you're so just yeah. dancing to the party line. Exactly. You're so dancing to it. Either they both did great or they both fucked up, but look at the numbers that did die or look at the numbers that didn't. I look at the ones that didn't, and I'm fine with both. Fine with both. I, I think uh, I, I don't both of them. I, I don't really uh, like that much. Trump is just more entertaining to watch. Um, oh, he's the best. He's the best. But I feel like now he had an opportunity to bring everyone together. You know, to be like, yeah, we just witnessed the murder. Uh, if fucking if if Minneapolis doesn't step up, the federal government will jump in and make sure these guys, you know, stuff like that. Instead of tweeting shit about Twitter, that do you remember that night when when Minneapolis was on fire? His tweets were, "Wait till tomorrow. We're gonna pass a bill. Twitter ain't censoring me." Dude, yeah. There's a city on fire. There's a city literally on fire and you're fighting with yeah. Twitter. Like pick your battles, right? Do this tweet tomorrow morning after you've tweeted about the fire, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it, it's stuff like that that bothers me. Like, but that's every politician. The, the, they're, they're numbskulls. Like we had yeah. here, Trudeau was talking about how, you know, we got to do better, you know, we're, we're in Canada, we're racist too, or we're not racist, whatever the fuck he said. Uh, this is the <laughs> blackface guy. This is the black. This is the guy who was cool right. with shooting uh, natives if they're blocking the fucking pipeline, and he's giving people a lesson on, on I racism. I didn't even go into this. Yeah, no, no. I was saying he he's the guy who was cool with shooting uh, natives that were trying to block a pipeline going through their land. 
right? Yeah. And then he's like, no, we don't got to be racist. Dude, you're the blackface guy. You're the guy that doesn't give a shit about natives. And then you're going you're gonna to fucking tell people about racism. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You're not the one. You know? The shit yeah. like that. I don't know. I don't trust any of these cocksuckers. I feel like but you get into that hey, position. Like, I don't trust any. Like, I just, I said it earlier. It's like, I hope this is true. I don't trust. That's why I don't. The only reason the person I trust is Malice because I personally know him. I like Malice time, a I lot, dude. Malice love, is fucking dude, hilarious. I, I know I'm going to sound like a fanboy. I love our whole network. I really do. It is so good. It is like, like between your show, which I fucking just started watching last year. I'm not going to lie to you. She's just like, uh, cause I've never found the time. Like I have to find time to fucking put these shows in. Yeah. You fucking torture that poor kid, but it's <laughs> such a good show. I, you just, it's, I, I fucking love, but, uh, and Malice is so great for the news. Like, and, and I'm telling you, Bill and Joe's show in the morning, it is such a fucking fun little come down from our show. And even TBD, like I like TBD with Garrett and Pat better than New York Crime Report. I do. And New York Crime Report was the first show I ever watched on this. It's such a, like, if you're not paying 10 bucks for this network, what the fuck are you doing? Why aren't you? Yeah, that's actually a good, uh, yeah, that's actually a good observation. Plus, I think we'll see. We'll see if we get any new shows this year. You know yeah. what I want? You know what I want? But I don't know if they're going to fucking do it. Somebody needs to make a decision. I want us to do this whole, because, I, you know, new rebranding, new logo. Make us look fucking, you know, cooler, nicer, you know? Yeah. More. That's uh, not about it. Make uh, us look more mainstream. Like, more main I, I, mean, I want the go? site to look more um, aesthetically pleasing. Well, it's also in this day and age, and, and it works, but, the, like, it's already passed. When I first started doing my Geno's Picks football videos, yeah, I did them in a studio. This was 12, 12 years ago. I did them in my buddy's studio, and I'm like, I'm like, and even then I got them like, I want people to pass these along so when they look at it, they think it was a TV show. They think it's a clip from a TV yeah, show. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think we already have that because we are a TV show. Yeah. But we need to brand it, I would argue, and I think this is what you're saying. So when people see clips, they, they're like, what channel was this? How did exactly. I miss it? Exactly. That's exactly say, what I'm saying. It's not a channel. You got to subscribe. It's 10 bucks a month. And and I think we're all guilty of this. We're all guilty of this. Paying anything on the internet, we're like, why am I going to pay anything? But when you take a step back and say, 10 bucks a month for this? Yeah, for so, it's not one show. No. It's, it's not no, one show. You're network. jumping on a network. You have an app, all that. But I'm telling you, I'm all for even helping, uh, you know, the rebranding. But I would love that. Because, like, let's say, you know, Gas Digital, I, I like that they went neon, right? Their theme is they have that neon... T- it's more visually pleasing. You need to have right. something. I mean, you want people to sign up. You want people to want to open the app to use it, right? You you don't want it to look like some fucking you know sixty two year old made this app on his fucking uh, on his shitty computer. You want it yeah. to look like it's a bunch of fucking young go getters that made it that yeah, built and it. And I'll it's, say this: yeah. our network, like to watch our shows, they're better than Gas Digital in the format and everything. Yeah. But Gas Digital has a better. And by the way, the merch model, and I love this network. You, you know what, Gas Digital's model merch model? a giant fucking dick. Like, yeah, Gas Digital has the best merch model uh, out of all of us. Without a doubt. Yeah. Like, we're selling, the, our latest thing is the Wuhan t-shirt, the Wuhan, the Wuhan lacrosse t-shirt. The Wuhan bats, the lacrosse team, I like that. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, you know, we, and I, I, I'd say we stole it, but we didn't. We had fucking James Altucher on the show, and he's like, he's like, you know, and he said, he's like, this was months ago. He's like, there's so many opportunities. Like, you could either shut down and think this coronavirus or, or find merch out. He's like, I want to make a shirt that says Wuhan lacrosse. And I said, we're going to make that right now. <laughs> and, and and Altucher is such a money-making idea machine. He goes, take it. He, he doesn't say like that. He doesn't like, give a fuck. Take it. And within days, it was made, but the fucking factory was shut down for COVID, and it's finally getting out there now. And we're giving Altucher, he's like, make it right now. It's like, done, watch this. And by the end of the show, our boy Matt Miller guy is like, here you go, go fucking Wuhan lacrosse. It's fucking great. But yeah, our merch model sucks a dick. I think we get three cents for every T-shirt that's made. Yeah, but it's, it's wrong, very it's stupid. The, the advertising with it's our logo more, on it. Well, it's the same thing. Even on my personal Patreon that I have, um, what I do is... Uh, I, ha- I don't have a merch shop. You can't buy any shirts, right? But what I do is for people that sign up, especially like one of the tiers, is I pick winners every month and I send them T-shirts. So what I do is I'll yeah. take money from Patreon, buy shirts, send it to them. So then it's, it, you're advertising, right? They're adverti- yeah, it's so, all advertising. Yeah, it's all yeah. advertising. So it's kind of like a recycling thing where they'll tell their friends like, oh, what is that T-shirt? Oh, it's a show. Let me watch it. And then you grow it. Same thing. But I'd like one day for us to set up a good fucking, um, you know, merch situation. Yeah, but that's that's down the line. Yeah. But getting back to it, like it is, it's such a good network, and and there's got to be a way to. We all have to learn it, especially us older people. It's like it's like I'm not paying money for the internet. It's like you're not gonna pay ten dollars a month. That you know that's 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 like one fucking less McDonald's trip to fucking have hours. 
Yeah. Hours. Like I'll, I'll say it again. I just started watching your show last oh, like, you, a couple months ago. You have hours. Couple minutes, there's too much material. Yeah. There's too much. I'm like, how are you not watching? And I think it was after we drank that time. I'm like, how are you not watching their show? You love drinking and hanging out with these guys. It's such a good show. Yeah, dude, we have fun with that. And I just can't wait for us to get back in the studio. Because uh, Mike built, dude, Mike built a fucking, it's a $50,000 studio. Jesus. The the new two drinking room studio. So the um, the fucking, we have everything. There. We have a, you know, Pierre is doing the fucking camera switching, all that shit. It's amazing. So the, and, and by the way, you know what's fucked up? is So Poseidon uh, fucked up his ankle. He fell down the stairs because he was looking at tits while staring at his cell phone. And then. <laughs> Why do I think you guys pushed him for a bit? But go on, go we, on. We got the CCTV video footage and we shared it so people could laugh at him. But then Pierre a few days ago, who does the sound and all that normally for us, he fucking fell down the stairs and broke two ribs and a collarbone. Or broke four ribs in the column or some shit like that. It's like, stairs are going to kill us. <laughs> I refuse to go up them and everyone else keeps fucking sliding down them. It's, it's fucking, it's horrific. Oh, dude, I, dude, while we speak right now, my right foot, I'm icing it because I fucking twisted my ankle when, back when I used to drink, getting off, like walking off a curb. And I'm like, oh, I'm drunk. And my ankle healed fine because I've always, but I was jumping rope a couple weeks ago. And Why I think the I was fuck were you? What are you, 12? Are you a 12-year-old girl? Why were you jumping rope? Miss Mary Mac 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 and I was jumping I was favoring my right ankle and now my right heel is killing me uh, it's killing because because we're old we're yeah. old people it's insane everything hurts anyways fucking uh Gino Bisconte uh I have in the description all of your links they're gonna find you on Instagram they're gonna find you on the Twitters they got you on, yeah. in hot water they got gum Fridays to check out yeah. uh Gino's picks once sports gets back, once the football season gets started, there's only one person you got to listen to when it comes to your goddamn degenerate gambling. It's Gino. Yeah, and, and bet the opposite. Bet the opposite. Uh, by the way, he is not responsible for any of your losses. That's a disclaimer <laughs> right now. But uh, Gino, anything uh, you want to plug? No, dude. Stay safe. Get back to, Get back down here sooner and let's do a show and have some drinks. Oh, yeah. We got to make up that May 1st date for everyone. So I got to yeah, get back do. down there. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Gino Bisconte. Thank you all for watching.